Hey, welcome back. We're continuing to do more work with fabric and pipelines. My name is Chris Wagner. This is Marcus Redu. Marcus, what do we got today on fabric pipelines? Today, we're going to talk about how we can leverage a metadata driven framework in our pipelines through a table that we've created in our lake house to filter and batch our table loads within our pipelines. Wow. I. All right, I can't wait to see how this is going to work. Let's head over to your laptop. So picking where we picking up where we left off in our previous video, we showed how to leverage an audit table in our lake house to capture our pipeline run uh, information for auditing purposes to go back and see how many successful runs did we have versus failed runs and some other metadata that would be valuable. Uh, to evaluate in our pipeline uh, runs. Today, we're going to show you how you can create a metadata table uh, to define either your tables or your set of files or folders that you'll be pulling into your lake house and how you can leverage some attributes within that table uh, to divide up uh, your batches within your pipeline. So the first thing we're going to do is define that metadata table. So I'm going to hop over to Fabric Notebook that I have created, which is going to define that metadata table in my lake house. So you can see here in cell one, our standard configuration settings for our Spark Notebook. In cell two, this is where I'm going to define uh, that metadata table that I'm going to leverage in my fabric pipeline. So you can see in, in line five here, I start my schema definition. I'm going to say define my file name, the batch that I want to include it in, and even if this table is active or not. Um, so those are going to be the three fields that I define. Below, I'm going to put in some data to that table right away. And if you watched our previous videos, we defined how you could list this set of tables or files directly in a variable in the pipeline. So somewhat hard coding those values in. We're gonna take that same value and put that into our metadata table uh, with these additional attributes to provide some flexibility in our pipelines. So you can see I have those seven tables listed. In the batch values, I'm going to say for this example, I want to load all my dimension tables in batch one. So anything that's uh, prefaced with dimension, I'm going to mark that as one in my batch. Anything that's marked or prefaced with fact, I'm going to make that batch two. And then for now, I want to make all these uh, folders or files active. So I'm going to leave that value as one for all my tables. But you could see that if I wanted to potentially turn a table off, I could mark that active to zero. And if I design it right in my pipeline, it would skip that table based on this metadata table definition. Wow, so that means you could programmatically have batched up jobs that leverage the metadata table that you could then turn off sub jobs to you know do sub loads if you only want to load one or two things and then turn them back on at the end. Is that right? That's exactly right, Chris. So instead of needing to go into your pipeline potentially and change the hard coded value in a variable or a parameter to define that table or file load, you can now control all of this through a lake house table. So it becomes really powerful whether you're debugging a solution, maybe you're adding a new table to your load. Uh, you can simply define that in your metadata table as opposed to having to make all of those changes in your pipeline. I think that's so it, brilliant. I love that a lot. Absolutely. So it's a best practice that we enforce at Baker Tilly. It's a really an industry-wide best practice that we would recommend you doing. So wherever possible, you know, automating 
your processes within your fabric pipelines through something like a metadata driven table uh, is a really powerful feature and something that we certainly recommend. So finally, finally finishing out this script, I want to define my table. So I'm going to call this metadata source table. I'm going to create my data frame. And I'm going to write that to a delta table in my lake house. So I've run that here. I'm going to go over to my lake house and just show you what that looks like from a table perspective. So you can see here I have my seven files or folders defined. I have the batch defined and I have whether or not that table is active or not. So now I'm going to head back to my pipeline. And I'm going to show you the activity that will allow you to look up that metadata table from your lake house. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus icon here. And I'm going to add a lookup task. Okay, so you can see here underneath metadata and validation, I'm going to add a lookup. And I'm going to change that timeout to an hour. And I'm going to call this lookup metadata. And in my settings, I'm going to define where I'm pulling this information from. So I'm going to pick workspace in the current workspace. I'm going to select lake house as my source. And then underneath that, I'm going to select the BT demo lake house that we're going to be pulling from. Underneath that, I can now pick a table. So I want to go down and find my metadata source table. And Another important thing here is we want to uncheck first row only. Because we don't want to just pull the first row of metadata that's in that table. We want to pull through all seven rows that are captured uh, in our metadata table there. Well, and, and this is all just pretty much drag and drop, it looks like. Am I am I missing some big coding you're doing in the background or is this Am I seeing this right? No, you're seeing it right, Chris. This is somewhat drag and drop functionality after you've done the configuration of those tables in your lake house. So really stresses the importance of once you've kind of laid the baseline for some of this in terms of your table configuration, it really becomes a drag and drop experience in your fabric pipelines. Wow, that's amazing. Cause so that means I could spend my time on value add activities and not just on configuring a pipeline, right? You got it. I love it. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to change our variable to get the metadata from our table as opposed to hard coding it. Uh, in the value section here for that variable. So we're going to go into our tables here. And underneath the value section, we're going to add dynamic content. And we're going to pass through the output from our lookup metadata activity. So you can see underneath here, there's activity outputs, and we just defined our lookup task here, lookup metadata. But we do need to add a couple of things underneath it. So to define the actual value that we're gonna get, we're gonna say dot output dot value to return the array of values that we get from that metadata table. Oh, so now we can that see that like it's about the most intense part of the coding is that little string, right? Exactly. And if I erase that and go back, you can see that after I put a dot in, it gives you IntelliSense on the options that you can select there. So I don't even need to know to put in dot output dot value. Fabric provides that IntelliSense for me in the expression builder. That's great. Just great. Okay. 
So now I'm going to save those changes. And we're going to kick off that pipeline run. To load our tables in via our metadata table as opposed to hard coding that value into our variable. So this is fantastic. So let's take a look at that lookup metadata activity. Uh, we can see it succeeded, but let's see what that looks like in terms of the output. So remember in our set variable, we defined it as the output dot value from that lookup activity, and we can actually see the value that it will pass into the variable here in our output window. So I could see that underneath the value array, it's going to pass in those different tables there or folders that I've defined in my metadata table. And we could see there that the pipeline run end task succeeded. So our addition of the lookup metadata was successful uh, in setting our variable there. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. This like implies like we can script out all of our bronze to silver, silver to gold layers inside of this uh, metadata driven table and then automate all of those. Am I right or am I off base here? You got it, Chris. So Again, thinking uh, broader in terms of your pipeline setup, instead of needing to create a specific pipeline for each type of copy activity or transformation that you're doing, you can orchestrate all of that uh, via metadata-driven tables like we've just shown here and define your process through that table and be able to, to integrate that into your pipeline setup. So it really cuts down on the amount of maintenance you need in your pipelines uh, and streamlines it to be able to use a specific set of pipelines or a single pipeline to do all of those activities. This is just brilliant, brilliant. So with that said, come on back for our next video where we will show you how you can leverage those batch or active type attributes in the metadata table that we have here to filter tables to different parts of the run. Oh man, I can't wait to see the, check this out. See you next time.